Okay, all right. So we're done now with all of the reagent strip parameters, their clinical significances, and their um, you know interferences and reagents and all that. So we right? No, so inhale, exhale, sa dera, no, kalma lang. It's I know it's quite a lot to take in. Okay, but we're done on a part. Now what we're gonna um, discuss now is the later part, the last part on how we handle and store uh, store your reagent strips, how we process. And um, in terms of timing and when we come to automation, all right? So um, for handling and storage, number one is, of course, your strips should be stored with a desiccant. Because again, um, your strips um, are very sensitive. Maybe if we like this desiccant, then um, the container may um, develop moisture. And, these mo and this moisture can um, damage your agent strips. So it should always uh, be stored with a desiccant, okay? And an opaque container. Still the same reason, your strips are really um, sensitive and if your um, your container is not opaque, then it can be exposed to light. Then, pwedeng ma deteriorate ang ubang reagents in most strips. Okay, all right. Next, you should st store below 30 degrees Celsius, so room temperature lang below 30 degrees Celsius, and never put in a refrigerator or freezer. Okay. Um, do not expose to volatile fumes. Still, the same reason because again, your strips are very sensitive. Okay. Do not use past expiration date. Oh yeah, that's very self-explanatory because again, um, if past expiration date now your reagents may be may are not working well. All right, so if you use them, of course, the results that they are producing are not any more um, reliable. Okay, all right, and yeah, same reason. Do not use if chemical pads become discolored because again, um, uh, it means that it has already undergone a chemical reaction which is not due to your urine specimen. Maybe because na exposed to light, na exposed to other environmental, um, you know, uh, factors. So, dili na siya pwede magamit. Okay? Alright. And you remove the strips immediately prior to use lang. So, you don't remove the strips while nag physical exam pa ka. Inana. You remove the strips after physical exam na. Kanana yung gamito na nimo siya for uh, dipping sa specimen. Because again, with the reason that it's very sensitive. Okay? Alright. Okay, now for QC, quality control. Now, you'll have this in clinical chemistry. But again, the point of quality control in all sections of the laboratory dapat na ay QC good. The point of the QC is that we want to ensure that all the results that we are releasing to the patient and all the results that we're rel uh, relaying to the doctors are really of medical importance and of medical accuracy. Because again, um, we don't want po na maghatag mga false or erroneous results or like mga inaccurate, right? Because again, a life is at stake if ato nang buhaton. So muna siya point sa quality control. We establish measures and mga tests in um, each section of the laboratory, not only in one, like each, like hematology, sa micro, clean chem, na sa own QC uh, rules and measures na gina follow. Okay? That's the point of QC. Na for, QC, QC. Now for um, AUBF or for CM, um, for your agent strip, Number one is you should test um, open bottles of reagent strips with known positive and negative control um, every 24 hours. Because again, this would ensure that all the strips that we are using while we are testing um, real human samples or human urine samples are, um, you know, they are working well and that they are producing the correct results. Okay? So every 24, 24 hours na siya. Okay? All right. Yes, na foil, di ka mo sa do. Okay, anyway. All right. So again, that's for number one. Number two, um, if there are control results that are not within control or out of control, then we have to resolve that by further testing. So, example, um, you tested your agent strip with a positive control. Example, pag test mo na with a sample na known na positive for glucose, then pag test mo sa strip negative siya, we have to do further testing. Now, if sigira gya in ana, then it means maybe faulty yun mo reagent strip. It's it cannot be used anymore. You have to replace it. Okay, all right, ayan. And again, uh, we also have what we call your backup tests. We also test its reliability. Because again, there are times na we want to confirm. Example, yung mga classic chemical exams sa imuhang protein and glucose. If you want to confirm, we also have to check its reliability. No, bahalag backup siya, bahalag second option siya. Ang hirap. <laughs> like me, char. Okay, anyway. Um, bahalag second option siya or backup siya. You should always test kung napasya yung pulos. <laughs> Grabe na yun. Because again, we don't want na bahalag backup siya na yun, magtesta. We don't want again na uh, really accurate at the results. We always want to make sure that our results na gina release are accurate and reliable. Okay? All right. And of course, if you have new reagents and new strips, you have it's imperative and it's required good that we test for its um, QC or its reliability because amot nagbago siya. So you want to make sure na 
wala ray problema while gi transport ba ang reagent strips to your laboratory wala ay problema sa you know ihang reaction sinana so it's imperative that we test it for a positive and a negative control when you say positive control again the specimen has a known positive analyte example positive juice sa glucose and if negative wala siya ato okay all right simple basic all right okay and of course, all our control results, we have to record them. We have a QC manual or a QC logbook. Because again, para for monitoring. And also para natin record. Para we want to know na, or we will know kung unsa yung mga, if consistent ra ba yung results, or consistent ra ba na the, the strips are performing, performing well. In ana, okay? All right. Now we go now to your reagent strip technique. How do we perform um, reagent strips, right? Samot if manual. Um, you have experienced this in your public health, so review na lang, no? Number one, you just always mix your specimen, usually by swirling, okay? Before transferring to the test tube, diba? It's always, always the first step. Because again, um, ah, not really first step, kaya mag label pa ka, pero <laughs> one of the um, initial steps, most important, mga important initial steps. Because again, if you don't mix, some formed elements may settle at the bottom and may not be detected by the strip. Example, some of the mga RBCs and WBCs. And remember your strips, um, you have uh, parameters for those. So you have your blood and leukocyte esterase. So if dili na ma-detect, then that could lead to a false negative. Okay? All right. Number two, if your specimens have been refrigerated, because again, the most common preservative na to ginagamit is refrigeration. If your specimens has been or have been um, refrigerated, then before testing, samot na sa chemical exam, you have to make sure to uh, make it return muna or pabalikin mo muna siya, char, to room temperature before testing. Why? Because the enzyme reactions found in your reagent pads are temperature dependent. Now, if medyo cold pa lang, wow, medyo cold, if your temperature is quite low, then that could be na pag-test ni mo, your enzymes or the reagents found in your pads, dili mo work. So, wala reactions na ma-produce. Okay, so again, if refrigerated out of temperature before testing with the reagent strip, you have to let it uh, warm to room temperature muna. Okay, alright. And then dip the strip completely, but briefly, usually mga 1 to 2 seconds. Okay, dili po dugay. Because again, this could promote the leaching of uh, reagents, okay? And this can, you know, lead to distortion of colors and ultimately ang pagsayop na pag-interpret. Okay? Alright. And you need to remove excess urine by passing the strip along the rim of the mouth of the tube, diba? Because again, we don't want runover phenomenon, diba? Remember, it's a runover phenomenon between the pH and protein pad, a protein and pH pad. Your protein is always maintained at an acidic pH of 3. Now, if na run over, mabutan siya sa pH, then your pH reaction will now be acidic. So, mag falsely acidic noon siya. Okay, so that's why we need to remove excess urine. Again, para dili mag run over between each pads. Okay, alright. And yeah, run over may lead to distortion of colors. Okay. All right. And of course, you need to compare the reactions with a, under a good light source and using the manufacturer's chart. Diba dapat dili matouch ang chart sa strip because again, kung basa ang strip medyo pwede mag basa pud ang imuhang color chart mga ma distort ng mga colors na asa color chart. Okay. And dapat na specified timing. So we'll talk about timing sa kada um, strip reactions later. Okay. And again, um, dapat yeah, kung unsay, kung unsay um, like, kani ang chart sa chem strip, kani ang chart sa multi-sticks, gamito na gina siya for chem strip, gamito na po na siya for multi-sticks. They are not interchangeable. Okay? Because na uban na lahi-lahi ang color na ma-produce, right? Okay? And um, if your timing cannot be achieved, like precise timing yun, kay each parameter, they have their own timing, but if dili siya ma-achieve, then you have to read it na lang between 60, 1 minute, to 120 seconds or 2 minutes. So, 1 to 2 minutes, pwede pa ka mo read si Mohang reactions, Anna. Okay? Alright. And perform backup tests. Kato mga classic chemical exam tests. Example, ka ng high ra kayong glucose. So, you want to test it sa classic chemical. Yeah, we'll have another lesson or topic on that. Okay? And always take note, diba, after bla, after the I after uh, diba, tube and after kwa, yes, after, <laughs> after kwaon siya sa tube, i-blot siya horizontally, diba? Horizontally sa tissue paper. Okay? Yeah, we have a video on that always. Okay, all right. So please take note of that. That's for the reagent strip technique. And of course, be alert for the presence of interfering substances. Now we have already discussed example mga interfering substances. If your urine sample smells like bleach or contaminated with bleach, then you have to be alert kung saan mga substances ang affected sa bleach, right? Um, if the patient sa history ng ingon na naglaklak siya vitamin C, kay addict kay siyog vitamin C, <laughs> then you have to um, remember the interferences. Um, or the substances that are interfered by ascorbic acid, diba? BB lang, alright? Okay. 
And of course, important yun ang principles and significance. Because again, um, you know, mag-correlate yun ta, okay? That's for number nine. We always have to correlate um, between the different, diba? Sa sugod pa lang sa introduction to UA, I've always um, emphasized na you have to correlate between the physical, chemical, and microscopic. So each part of urinalysis um, are interconnected with one another. Okay? So kung unsa ang physical, unsa yung makita or expected sa chemical. If kaniyang chemical, unsa expected sa microscopic, inana. Or yeah, inana. So interchangeable, ay, inter interconnected sa lang tulo. Okay? Alright. So always, muna siyang important yun sa chemical exam, guys. You have to understand the principle and its clinical significance. Why is it like that? Okay? Alright. Okay. Okay. Now, we'll now go to the timing. As you can see, it depends on the brand of the strips. But usually, itong gina-follow is kaning sa multi-sticks. Alright? So, for glucose, bilirubin 30 seconds. Ketones, kay 40. Spec gram, 45. And you have daghang 60 seconds. And we have a mnemonic for that. You have Papa BUN. Alright? Papa BUN. Muni siya ang 60 seconds. You have pH, protein, blood ni ha? Blood, uro, and nitrite. Para ano lang? Papa Blan na lang. Para dili mo malibog sa bilirubin. So, papa blan. <laughs> pH, protein, blood, uro, and nitrite. Okay? And of course, the longest reaction in the reagent strip is your leukocyte esterase. So you have 120 seconds or 2 minutes. Okay? Please take note of this timing. GB for 30 um, seconds. Glucose, bilirubin. 40 seconds ang ketones. You have um, 45 seconds for spec grab. 60 seconds, papa blan. Para ma, para ma remember nyo na B there stands for blood dili bilirubin and you have again 120 seconds for leukocyte esterase the longest reaction to take place in your reagent strip sa yun ang ubano kay 60 seconds tana <laughs> okay pero palo lang ta sa multi sticks okay all right now in your routine clinical laboratory especially sa hospital like na experience po na ako um, both sa Galeares and Soto, no? bahala kung sa siya ka-public, bahala kung sa ka-government hospital, no? automated na ng <laughs> urinalysis. Usually, ang manual na lang isang physical, like how you, um, how you, yeah, color and ihang clarity. Now, that would depend again dyan po sa sample. Usually, if gamay ang sample, ang medtech mo off na lang na mo perform og manual. But if normal na sample na makayarag, mapuno or almost full ang 10 ml tube, then proceed to automation. Because, your chemical and microscopic uh, dito kay automated na yun. So, easy na lang. Alright? So, for automation, um, we have... Uh, it follows the, the principle of reflect, reflectance photometry or reflectometry. Now, what does it mean? Um, so, it uses the instrument, of course, reflectance photometer. And the principle is that reflectance photometry. So, what it measures is reflected light. So, what happens as a strip, right? Let's say, mga pads ni siya. Alright? So, of course, naman na siya color. Right? Na reaction. Okay. So, the machine, what the machine does is, iyan ang pasigaan ng light. Okay? Pasigaan ng light. And then, of course, na light na mo reflect. The darker the color, di ba? If ang pad ni mo is darker, meaning, highly concentrated. Di ba? Therefore, the darker the color, more light ang ma-absorb. More light ang ma-absorb, therefore, less light ang ma-reflect. So, therefore, if darker ang color, less light ang ma-reflect. So, therefore, the light or reflected light is inversely proportional. Inversely proportional. Reflected light is inversely proportional to concentration of analyte. Kagets lang. Inversely proportional meaning opposite sila. So, if gamay ang reflected light, meaning dako ang concentration sa analyte, and if daghang reflected light, or mas, yeah, daghang ng amount, then gamay ang concentration sa analyte. Okay, please take note. Because again, pasigaan ka, the darker you are, mas more light yung ma-absorb kaysa ma-reflect. So therefore, the machine uh, measures the amount of light reflected man. So the machine now measures small amounts of reflected light, which means na you're highly concentrated. Okay? Muna siya point, Anna. Okay, so in darker colors, light is absorbed. Always remember, if darker ang color good, light is more absorbed than reflected. Okay, so therefore, the concentration of the analyte is inversely proportional to the reflected light. That's for reflectance photometry. That's the principle for automated. Okay, here again, di ba? As you go mag mas darker, so light is shown, right? And then, of course, if darker, mas more light ang absorbed, and then less light ang reflected. So kung less light gani, that would mean na highly concentrated ka. So, mo show na na siya dere sa mo ang LED display. Okay? Alright. So, that's for reflectance photometry. 
Okay. And a summary or a summarized table now of all the principles. So basically, di ba na ako assignment na gipagamaan niyo guys na table. Um, that would really help. Maybe sa lecture niyo or sa lab. Para easy na lang siya pagtuon. Okay, di ba? Muna siya importance po sa table sa sahay. It's important kay dali na siya matunan na lang. Okay, dili na kailangan na, you know. Pero it would depend on your lear learning style pa rin. Okay, so because learning is individualized. Okay, alright. Ayan, so that's the summary. Okay. Alright, so again, review lang sa atas sa ubang mga mnemonics. Unsa to mga interferences or substances na ma-interfere sa ascorbic acid, you have BB lang. Okay? Please take note kaning first two, blood and bilirubin. Interfered ra siya by ascorbic acid at concentrations greater than 25 mg per dl of ascorbic acid. So if ang ascorbic acid greater than 25 mg per dl, ma-affected na ang bilirubin and blood. But if dili ra, dili ra siya ma-affected. So, kanis lang L and G, ma-affected yun siya sa um, ascorbic acid at any concentration. Okay? So, again, BB lang. Blood, bilirubin, leukocyte esterase, nitrite, and glucose. Unsa to mga 60 seconds na mga parameters you have, papa, BUN. A uh, papa, blan na lang. Okay? Para pH, blood, a uh, pH, protein, blood, uro, and nitrite. Okay. Additional na mga um, mnemonics, kisa to mga violet daw na colored ang pads, you have... BKL. So, how we remember it's a review. Um, Nay bakla na ganahan og violet. So, you have bili, you have ketones, and you have leukocyte. Okay? Kisa to mga pink daw, you have pan. Okay? Please take note, ang P stands for pink. Okay? Delete protein or pH. Euro and nitrite. Muna siya mga pink daw. Okay? Pink. Pan. Pink, si euro, and nitrite. Okay? And lastly, katong mga formalin, ako nang i-appeal sa akong notes at itong nag-teach ko sa Lemar for one day. So, false um, negative sa mga caused by formalin, you have BU lang. Blood and euro. Okay? Pero ang false positive sa um, formalin, you have LE. Okay, siya rang usa. Alright, so that's just a summary. Para at least in a way, di na kayo maglisod. Alright? So, Again, um, false negative for formalin, doha na kabok, BU, uh, blood and euro. And false positive is LE. O sara, okay. Leukocyte esterase. Alright, so basically that's the end of chemical exam. I think this is really one of, or if not the longest panahon, <laughs> pre-recorded lecture. Like, we, the ganjo kind to discuss. But I do hope na, in a way, nakasabot ramo. And, you know, na learn lang, na simplified rang ang, ang medyo complicated na topic. Again, if you have any questions, if you have any clarifications, feel free to chat or PM lang. Or also read your books or Strasinger because it's well explained put there. Okay, so thank you, dears. I hope to see you on our next lecture, all right? Okay, keep safe. Drink your water always. <laughs>